Hi guys, today I'm going to show you my technique for painting fur. Today um, I've got this beautiful bulldog. I'm getting his eye painted, putting in a little raw sienna. I'm going to let it dry. I always do the eyes first. I'm outlining it with a little burnt umber, getting the shadows in around the, the edge of the iris. Come back in with a little bit more of the raw sienna and blending it around. I really always like to do eyes first. Now while it's still wet, I'm dropping in a little bit of burnt umber and around his pupil and around the edge of his eyes. That way it'll kind of bleed into the eye. Now we're going to do his eyelid and as I've said in every video, I do not like to use just straight black. It's too flat for me. So this is a mixture of um, burnt umber indigo blue and Payne's gray and I think it gives them a, a better black a more colorful black and it's just not flat and this is just mixed with a little bit of water so it's thicker also going to use that to do his pupil with and you can't really tell from the video but I have um, masking fluid over the highlights of his eye and I'm painting right over them so that I can save the white and later I'll remove it and you'll see the white highlights. As a matter of fact, all those blue blotches on my painting, that's um, liquid masking fluid. And I use it to preserve the highlights where I want it to stay white. Now I'm still painting around the edge of his eye and I'm using that same exact mixture of with the, the black mixture, just with a little extra water. I'm going to come back and darken it up because it was a little light for me. And I'm going to paint his nose with the same exact color mixture. And on his nose, I've also got little dots of liquid latex so that I can preserve the whites to create a kind of texture. Bulldogs have rough noses. They have little bumps all over their noses. And I want to preserve that. Now I'm still taking the same mixture, only with less water, I mean the same mixture of colors, but I'm using less water and I'm starting to paint tiny little lines uh, to indicate the fur. And as you see, I'm leaving white in between those lines so that it can shine through and it'll give that um, texture feeling, that hair feeling. Now I'm just adding a little bit of raw sienna. This dog is a brindle dog. It's kind of a tiger striped dog and they have brown and black stripes in their fur. And so I'm going to start adding some of the, the um, brown stripes and I'm using burnt sienna and raw sienna to do that. And as you see, it's just tiny lines spaced. So it's not a solid color. You don't want it to be solid. Not with my technique because I like to um, layer layers of color on top of each other and you can still the wonderful thing about watercolor is you can see the color underneath it shines through and it it really makes it special to me uh, and I like to work all around the painting I don't like to work in just one spot and finish that one spot I want to go around and different spots and that way I can judge where I need to go darker where I need to stay lighter stay away from so I do a little bit at a time, but I do always use the eye when I'm doing um, dogs or cats, animals, people. as sort of my centered part where I start and work out from there. Okay, that underwash has dried, so you see now I'm putting um, that dark mixture over it. And it's not bleeding because it's completely dry. And that's the secret to layering colors, layering washes. You let that first wash dry completely or it'll just bleed and it'll be a big mess and you don't want that. And as you see with the strokes, I leave little white spaces. Actually, not white spaces. I let the underwash peek through the lighter gray. It, it makes a convincing texture of fur for this puppy. And in the areas where it's dark, I just keep darkening it. Now I'm taking here this the liquid latex and I have a fine line applicator. And I'm just putting dots because I want to preserve that lighter gray underneath. 
I let it dry, of course. Always let your liquid latex dry, but uh, of course I've took hour, taken hours to paint this. So I'm doing it in a shorter, shortened up version, but always let the latex dry before you paint over it. Uh, and I'm darkening around his nose and his nostrils. And now when I lift that latex off of his nose, the masking fluid, there will be white spots and there will be light gray spots. So you can actually put the latex mask over colors and save those colors for later. It's not just for preserving whites. Now this dog has a white muzzle and a lot of bulldogs that have really light colored muzzles, you can see the pink skin underneath and you can see the pink skin in this dog's. And to get that pink, I just use a rose and a little bit of the sienna color to make a pinky brown. And it's a really watery wash. I'm using a dagger brush. I use this dagger brush for almost this whole painting, this one brush. I really like it because it has a really, really super fine tip point. But if you lay it sideways, or it will flatten out and cover more space. So it's pretty versatile. Now he's got a little bit of a black spot under his nose and across his top lip. I'm going to start painting that in and I'm just painting it in little dots and strokes because their upper lips on a bulldog has a lot of texture, a lot of it's kind of bumpy and wrinkly and it has pores in it and little hairs sticking out. Bulldogs are a mess but I love them. They have the most expressive faces and they are my favorite to paint. And I'm just doing the texture, just dots, dots, and dash to get the texture underneath. Remember, this is going to be my underpainting. I'm going to paint more on top of this after it dries. And I'm just really setting up the foundation for his upper lip. And I'm continuing on. And I let the pink dry before I came to touch it because if the pink was wet, the black color, gray, dark gray color would just bleed all into it and it would be a mess. Now more layers, and that's the secret to glazing, layers on top of layers, and let the other layers shine through a little bit, um, and be sure to let that first layer dry 100%, I can't stress that enough, that is the secret to glazing. Now I'm going to add a little bit more sienna in his fur, I'm going to keep darkening it up and layering it, always leaving a little bit of the under layer to shine through. So it gives that textured look, that furry look. Now I'm going to go back now that this is completely dry on his jowls and add more a darker pink. It's just the same pink mixture but with less water. The same color mixture. And I'm just putting in where he has some dark spots on his jowls. I'm putting a little bit right there is his gum line and that's going to be actually a little darker pink it should be his gums are pinker than his jowls so I'm coming back in with a little more pink added to the brown and a little less water so that it's darker but I think it's a little too dark so I think I'm going to get my trusty q-tip and dab it out or cotton swab whatever you want to call them I call them q-tips cotton swabs I think is what I'm supposed to be saying and underneath his chin there's more a little more pink but anytime you think you've painted too much color you can always use a cotton swab to tie, to lift a little bit of it up while it's still wet and that'll lighten that area wherever you put the q-tip kind of darkening his wrinkles up and you notice I'm not drawing a straight line I'm doing it with the little dashes to make it look like fur and his jowls have kind of a peachy tint to them in some spots so I've got the sienna with just a little tiny touch of rose in it more sienna than rose and it's really watery and I'm gonna lay that down wherever he has kind of the peachy tint to his fur let it dry I'm gonna work on his wrinkles and as you notice I'm not painting straight lines I'm going along the line with the little dashes doing really light strokes with a light touch so that I don't disturb the dry underlayer and make them bleed and it keeps it crisp and keeps that detail and I really like to paint with watercolors with a lot of detail I'm not really a loose watercolor painter I like to push it and see just what I can get out of the medium how much detail I can get out of it 
And again, I'm just putting in some more of the folds, layering a little bit more of the color, getting the texture going. You see I've removed the masking, flu or the masking fluid from his eyes, so now you can see that beautiful white crisp highlight. You can see the highlights in his nose and on his bottom lip. You see his little teeth shining out of his gums. I think I just still have a little bit of masking fluid on his ears where I want to keep that white. Now on his uh, uh, bottom lip, I am just putting in some more texture, darkening up spots. You see the highlight across his bottom lip. It makes it kind of look three-dimensional, and that's what you want to remember when you're painting is color, light and dark, texture, just your principles of art, elements of art. Those are important and you constantly got to think about are you achieving what you're trying to achieve using those elements and it's a little harder with color to get the lights and the darks it's easier with black and white now I'm just going to keep adding the fur and little lines building up those colors and that's really the whole idea of the technique is to just keep building up colors letting it dry build on top of that some more in the background I'd already put in a few blocks of blue the whole painting was only six or seven colors the dog only has the one mixture of the Payne's gray burnt umber and indigo blue and that's all the gray and black areas and then the fur is raw sienna and burnt sienna and those are all the brown areas and so that's, and then of course the rose with the pink and the sienna. And that's basically all the colors of the dog. And then I have um, some blue, I think it's Windsor blue, sh Windsor blue. And it's, I think it's the green shade that I used in the, the back for the background. And we're just going to continue to keep layering. I'm going in his ear structure now. Bulldogs have flopped over ears and they're kind of crinkled inside so that's what I'm working on here with the same mixture of the, those three colors and I'll leave them down below in the links so that you can check them out now I'm working around the tops of his ears and how his ears are curled under and the little structures inside of his ears just kind of pulling those out outlining them now we're going to work back like I said I like to work all over my paper I don't work in one spot and from going from place to place I'm letting one place dry while I work on another place that's already dry once I feel like that other place is dry like his ear that's what I'm waiting his ear to be dry then I'll go back to that and so it really helps me keep everything in balance being able to work all over the painting at once instead of trying to focus on one area and I'm um, as I said letting those areas dry as well and I think you probably get the whole idea it's basically just layering colors letting them dry really 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 well before you add the next layer use a light touch on the next layer remember where your darks and lights are so that you can make it look like a three-dimensional form on a piece of paper and uh, just keep working at it. I think y'all can do it. And that's about it for, uh, for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please remember to subscribe below. Share it with your friends. Go check out my website, vibsart.com. And thank you for watching. There you go. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.